So what we're going to consider today is, again, a situation where your car won't start, right? And if you recall in the past when I discussed ignition and uh, fuel system troubleshooting, <clears throat> I used the acronym <clears throat> FACTS, Fuel, Air, Compression, Timing, Spark, right? So what we're going to actually consider today is timing. And I'm not talking about um, timing chain or relationship between cam and crank. And I'm not talking about ignition, which are the obvious timing concerns. What I'm talking about are the two critical high authority sensors in the car that actually allow the ECM to basically time everything. So here on the drawing, we have the engine control module um, wired to it. Uh, basically two wires coming from the uh, crank sensor, three wires from the uh, um, cam sensor. Um, what we basically have here is the crankshaft position sensor. It's basically a two wire sensor, if we disregard the shield ground. Basically a two wire uh, sensor. It's a variable reluctance sensor, essentially consisting of a housing with a coil of wire inside it, a magnet, and an associated reluctor wheel. The reluctor wheel is, sits, uh, lives on the backside of the crankshaft. I'll show you a drawing of that. Obviously, it's deep within the internals uh, of the car. It's hidden behind the flywheel, actually. Um, so we're not going to be actually physically seeing it, but I'll show you on the drawing. So essentially how the uh, crankshaft position sensor works is the crankshaft actually rotates. Let's say you've turned the key and the starter is actually rotating, obviously, the flywheel, and uh, hence the crank. As the crank rotates, the reluctor wheel, uh, what it does is it actually essentially changes the magnetic coupling between the magnet that's in the, uh, the housing of the sensor and the coil itself. What does that do? It essentially induce, induces an analog, a sine wave uh, signal, uh, and, it, and that's put into the engine control module. And from that, the engine control module can actually sense crank position and crank speed. Um, there's uh, some indexation that you may, may or may not be able to, I realize this is pretty small scale, that you may or may not be able to see on the drawing, but there's a few notches missing from the, um, from the reluctor wheel that's uh, on the crankshaft, and that actually affords uh, some indexation to the, uh, to the system. Um, moving up to the uh, camshaft position sensor, you'll notice that it's actually a three wire hall effect sensor. Hall effect sensors actually require an independent power source. And you can see here on the drawing that it actually gets 12 volts through the, uh, through the main relay. So we have a feed, a ground, and the signal output. You can see here we also have a reluctor wheel associated with it. Again, essentially changing the, uh, the mag coupling. The hall effect sensor is capable of changing that. They toggle the ground, uh, the signal from just above ground, but let's call it zero volts to five volts. It's a square wave in this case. So that's a quick overview of the sensors themselves. Yeah, I'm not gonna be actually uh, physically be able to show you the uh, crankshaft uh, position sensor, uh, fellas, for the simple reason that is buried inside the internals of the engine. Um, in order to access it, you'd have to remove the gearbox, remove the flywheel. So what we're looking at here is actually the backside of the block. Uh, this is the uh, flange that the uh, flywheel actually mounts to. And just behind that um, is actually the uh, reluctor wheel. I'll show you a picture of that momentarily. But there's the sensor itself. Um, there's what the housing itself actually looks like. Coil and the magnet actually live inside, single bolt mount. Uh, there's a test here that we'll discuss uh, momentarily. Here is the crankshaft itself. As I mentioned, you can see in the flywheel here, it's shown on the bench. And on the back side of the flywheel, um, sorry, back side of the crankshaft, right where the flywheel actually mounts the flange, just inboard of that. This is actually the reluctor wheel. Um, 36 minus six, they call it, because there's actually six notches miss missing for actual uh, indexation purposes. You can see I've got the air box actually removed, the air filter. Um, of course, that's where the mass airflow sensor lives back in the housing. So I've removed this. These are obviously the ignition coils. Uh, just after that, this connector here, and that is actually the uh, camshaft position sensor. So we'll remove that. We'll take a look at the uh, reluctor wheel. We can actually see the teeth of the uh, reluctor wheel inside. And I'll actually show you how you can test this. So uh, once again, the uh, Suzuki manual, the SX4 manual is actually brilliant. Actually giving us all the detail we actually need. So we're going to look at these two signals on the scope. Uh, there is actually a reference waveform. In fact, there's two of them. We, uh, good detail on the uh, cam and crank position sensor and actually tells you what to pin out. Just a suggestion with respect to finding these pins. As you can see, uh, we've got on approximately between the two connectors 120 pins uh, split in a, uh, it's a split connector. Uh, they have a, a Charlie and an Echo uh, connector. Um, use the color coding 
on the uh, wiring diagram in order to help you to find it. So you can see here that we're dealing with pins 51 and 52 with respect to the crankshaft position sensor and camshaft respectively. So um, utilize the color coding on the wiring diagram in order to help you to find what pins you actually need. So the pins 51 and 52, use that color coding. You'll see the uh, that we'll have a pink wire and a red and a yellow wire next to each other, roughly on the first row, roughly in the center of the connector, and that will help you to actually localize what you're looking for. Otherwise, it can be, again, a bit overwhelming. Make it make, it make sense, right? Utilize the information that you've got in order to localize the uh, pins of interest. At the uh, engine control module itself, uh, you can see I've actually, uh, it might be a wee bit difficult for you to see, but I've got the two wires, uh, that is the red and the yellow, as the wiring diagram said, and uh, and also the pink, and I've got them uh, both actually uh, back pinned. So you can see, uh, be careful because the pins are adjacent. The last thing you want to do is short something and cause uh, yourself... The time grief. base set at uh, 100 uh, milliseconds. Uh, again, I've got uh, channel A off at the moment, which is going to be on 10 volts, uh, on the 10 volt scale. And I currently have the... Um, um, B channel, which is the, uh, the crankshaft position sensor on the five volt scale. Now, if the car was running, you probably have to bump that up to uh, to uh, the ten volt scale. Again, keep in mind that the amplitude of an analog signal, because the crankshaft position sensor is an analog sensor, variable reluctance sensor, the faster the engine actually, uh, the faster the RPM, the amplitude will actually grow. So because the car is actually turning on the starter, you'll see a little bit of compression and what looks like modulation, maybe not the right word, but it appears like modulation. And again, it's because that the speed is actually varying uh, with the starter and the compression strokes of the engine. So go ahead, crank it, Stevie. Okay, so stop. Let's uh, let's scale this up. Here's the here you can see the increase in uh, the increase in amplitude of the signal, and this is what I'm talking about. So you can actually see the difference here. These are the uh, the sink notches in the uh, reluctor wheel, and uh, these are just the teeth. The distance between each wave would translate to 10 degrees of uh, crankshaft rotation. <laughs> Okay, good. We can actually see the camshaft. Again, the digital output from the uh, the Hall effect sensor, 0 to 5 volts basically, and the analog, um, the sinusoidal wave output from the, uh, from the crankshaft position sensor. Okay, so what I've done here is I've pulled in uh, a couple of rulers here, and I've mar actually marked off 720 degrees of uh, crankshaft rotation. So I think you can see that so if this is our starting point at zero degrees between the between the two indexation notches there, that would be 360 degrees. Continue again for another 360, and that would be 720. So if you reference those two rulers with respect to the camshaft position sensor, does it make sense that it would be right back to where it started with respect to the cam? I think so. Of course, the cam is uh, the cam and the crank are geared two to one uh, ratio for every two rotations of the crankshaft, a single rotation of the camshaft, and you can see here that after 720 degrees of rotation, it brings us right back to the same position on the camshaft. At this point, you could pretty much rule out an issue with the cam or the crank sensor on the car.